Hi, welcome to School of Hustle. I'm your host, Sarah, and this is the show where we chat with everyday entrepreneurs about everything that goes into starting a new venture. Today's guest is not only an entrepreneur, model, and influencer with 170,000 followers, she's also a doctor. Dr. Jennifer Sai is a modern day optometrist that has achieved what few others in her industry has done. She runs a concierge vision care and optical boutique unlike any other called Line of Sight. Jennifer also founded Carrot Eyewear, a fashion forward eyewear brand that is made for those with heavy screen time. Jennifer, welcome to the show. It's so great to have you here. Thank you for having me, I'm so honored. So tell us a little bit about your story. I was really passionate about eye care, um, starting in, I think, high school. Hmm. Not on purpose, but because I was a really bad contact lens wearer. Oh, why? <laughs> were, you, were you one of those people that just puts it in and sleeps in it? I might have been. <laughs> uh, yeah. I've and done that. It's terrible. It's, it's awful, and I tell patients that now, but um, I definitely had a, um, I slept in my contacts, ended up with a really um, severe uh, corneal infection that led mm. to an ulcer, an ulcer um, and it could have led to blindness um, oh if I didn't catch it in time. So that really piqued my interest in optometry. Um, and when I went into, I guess, um, undergraduate to, to do my studies, I explored different specialties in healthcare. I knew that I wanted to be in a career where I helped people. Um, but during that time, while I was shadowing different specialties, um, I shadowed an optometrist and I got my exam done and I was dilated and I found out that I had another um, eye issue, which is uh, called a retinal tear. Wow, uh, and how does one get a retinal tear? That sounds scary. It is quite scary and usually you're asymptomatic. Um, a lot of people don't know. Um, your tissue in the back, it, it's really um, delicate and okay. if you develop a hole or tear, um, you could also lose your vision. So, wow. so you've almost lost your vision Two different times. Yes, kind of. <laughs> You're very lucky to have perfect vision today. Which is why I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I was really shadowing those optometrists and I think what stood out to me was they were so compassionate about what they did and I could tell that they cared about me as a person. So they really were the ones that inspired you to get into the field. and. Mm -hmm. You, most people that go into the eye field, they just become an optometrist and that's, that's where it ends. But mm -hmm. you went a step further and you've now designed an eyewear brand. Mm -hmm. You've opened your own boutique shop. So mm -hmm. tell me about that. Why not just become an optometrist? Mm -hmm. um, why did you decide to go the extra step and become an entrepreneur in this industry? It's funny, in school they have you, the very first day in orientation, you draw. And I thought I was like, that's silly. Like, that's silly. <laughs> I feel like I'm in kindergarten. You draw a picture of how you expect your life to look like in five years. Um, and I drew, I think, a picture of a house and me and kids. And that's what I thought my life would be. I feel like we all thought we were going to have <laughs> like, a, like a house and kids by 25. And exactly. then you become 25 and you realize, wait, I don't, <laughs> this is too this soon. Is, yeah, this wasn't, and I think that, you know, it's, because the society and, and what you see everyone else totally. do, you think the path to success is the same. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that I could explore other options. Um, and these are things they also don't really tell you in school because you're there to learn um, eye care mm -hmm. uh, primarily. And um, I think part of it was I was always curious to nature. Um, I think being an entrepreneur wasn't something I planned on doing, but I think because I'm curious and I think that things could always be done in a better way, yeah. I think that passion really pushed me forward um, to want to create a space or um, products that I think um, are, are helpful for people. So you have the two brands, you have mm -hmm. Carrot Eyewear and mm -hmm. you have Line of Sight, which is where we are today in her beautiful new boutique shop in Hudson Yards. So yes. congratulations. Thank I know you. you opened during a hard time, but it's currently doing really well, so that's a huge accomplishment. So which one did you start first, Carrot Eyewear or Line of Sight, and why? Uh, so the first one I started was actually Carrot Eyewear. Um, I started, I think, mm, January or March of 2018, which <clears throat> at this point I feel like with the pandemic, it's been, it feels like years ago. <laughs> Um, but it's only been two years, so I think um, at that time the reason why I decided to create an eyewear line, again, it wasn't because I thought that that was something I wanted to do, yeah. um, but I was seeing patients um, and every patient, uh, especially in New York, um, and more prevalent now that everyone's working remote is they always complain that 
they had headaches at the computer screen yes. and that they um, had trouble focusing and they were experiencing eye strain. Mm -hmm. um, and they asked me um, what I recommended for them um, to purchase online because they wanted something that was affordable um, that they could just easily put on in front of their computer desk. Yeah. And I found um, it hard to recommend something that I would personally um, you know, tell my patients to purchase online without knowing the ingredients, where they got the lenses from, yeah. the quality of the blue light protection. Um, and after, I think, a while, I decided, you know, I, I do want to be able to create a doctor-made um, affordable eyewear line for blue light protection that is um, something that anyone can purchase domestically and in Canada. So really to be able to reach out to others who need more help because I recognize it's not just the patients that I see. Yeah. Um, it's probably um, a lot of people are experiencing eye strain. And, being able to provide um, good quality lenses uh, for them. Myself included, because sometimes when I'm on a computer too long, my eye starts twitching. Is mm -hmm. that a sign of uh, something relating to blue light? Uh, you know, my mom that might be something <laughs> else. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> my mom used to say like, oh, that's like one eye is good luck or the other one isn't. <laughs> But that's more like a myth. Um, that's called lid myocamia. Uh, oh, okay. So it, it can happen from digital strain when there's too much computer usage or your prescription is not corrected properly. Mm. Um, but it happens because um, it's usually due to stress, lack of sleep, too much caffeine, dehydration, and excessive computer use. So, mm, okay, I makes mean, sense. That's like everyone. That's the definition of um, COVID-19. <laughs> That's when it started. Exactly. Uh, so carrot eyewear isn't just your normal blue light glasses, which, I mean, we've all seen the classic blue light glasses. They look like it's um, just not the most fashion forward, let's just say that. <laughs> You've designed some very fashion forward glasses. Uh, and was that part of the plan when you started carrot eyewear was there's nothing in the market that actually looks good that actually works? Uh, yes, I, I think yes. I, I thought that what was available on the market, um, I didn't think that the styles um, spoke to uh, different personalities. Mm -hmm. uh, so creating styles that I think um, are fashion forward without having to shell out like hundreds of dollars yeah. for something that you could wear simply for the desk um, was important to create. And I think that there was a lack in the market um, space for that because a lot of the frames seemed generic mm -hmm. um, and they were uh, plastic acetate frames, yeah. um, one solid color. So, um, or the light, the glasses were either too yellow or too blue um, in yes. terms of the, the tint. And I wanted to be able to create something that looked virtually transparent. And that, is this carrot eyewear right here? Um, yeah, so this is uh, the line. Uh, these are a few of the products that I have. And these and are models. all blue light protection too, or? Yes, they all really? have. Really? Yep. You should see my blue light glasses. They look <laughs> super cool, and I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> like, the lenses are like orange. I like, I, I wear them at night or when I'm in front of the computer all day long and my eye starts twitching mm -hmm. uh, because they're so ugly that I'm embarrassed oh my to gosh. even have my husband see me wear them. This looks so fashionable. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. How did, how did you, okay, so let's get into, I'm just sorry, speechless at how disappointed I am in my current blue light glasses, given that these also work. Um, let's talk about execution, right? Mm -hmm. So. Starting uh, Carrot Eyewear, how do you start an eyewear brand? Where do you get the materials, the funding? Mm -hmm. Can you walk me through this process? Yeah. Um, so I worked for, I would say, maybe four years prior to starting my eyewear line. And um, I, in the beginning, worked like two to three different positions. I, I had some days where I worked seven days a week. Wow. Anytime um, a place could offer me more hours, I took it. Um, and it partly was to learn as much as I could and absorb all the information that I could learn from different practices. Mm -hmm. um, but part of it really was to save up um, money to be able to uh, create something. And uh, I knew that I wanted to open a store, but I wanted to get something going. With the eyewear line, it was something that I felt like I could sort of bootstrap myself mm -hmm. um, with a smaller funding, save on the side. So um, every month I would put aside savings uh, towards being able to eventually manufacture frames. Um, I 
uh, went through the process of uh, go going through designs um, and also seeking different manufacturers, um, even going on a trip to different locations to evaluate if this is uh, a place that I want to create my product. So you really started yeah. it from the ground up. You've d you yeah. did everything from designing the lenses to finding the materials to designing the website. Um, the marketing, which I know you, you do all your marketing organically, and we'll mm -hmm. talk a little bit about her marketing strategy a little bit later on. <laughs> um, you've designed the lenses. Mm -hmm. You love what you made. What's the next step? Um, with Carrot, it is an e-commerce line, um, and it was initially very fun for me. It's like a great way to reach, um, I would say, like millennials, young professionals who really just wanted something quick and easy, affordable, and trendy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, hopefully, maybe in the future, I you would be able to expand it into sort of um, different designs and possibly adding prescription into them. And I think that's something that a lot of consumers have requested um, to be able to do that. So I think being able to uh, possibly put prescription in it and maybe making it global, um, mm. I think would be amazing. So it seems like you thought of line of sight um, and then many years later, you actually went through with starting the business. Now. Mm. Any entrepreneur knows that it takes time to formulate the perfect idea, mm -hmm. and I'm sure that was part of your process. So mm -hmm. um, how long did it take you between concept and execution, and what did you do during that time? Um, it definitely took me the full four years of practicing. I think I knew maybe my second year out that after working in all these locations that things could be done better, and that I eventually did want to start my own. And part of what I did was trying out different places. Um, I remember just going into different practices that were on the market to sell and um, evaluating their P, um, profit P&L sheets. Um, that was something I did not learn in school at all. And I had to go in there and really learn to understand um, what business was, uh, was about. That's so true. Do you think starting Carrot Eyewear is what gave you uh, that confidence to start another venture, which would be line of sight? I think having an um, online e e-commerce uh, product line that I started with my own savings mm -hmm. um, and growing from that has taught me a lot about being an, um, an entrepreneur and running my own business that I felt confident um, so going forward and signing an actual retail space and really creating a brand from scratch. Um, I never dreamed in a million years that I would or think that I would open a brand new cold start practice in Manhattan. The interior design of Line of Sight is so beautiful. It feels like you're in someone's living room. It's cozy. <laughs> it's welcoming. Um, it's unlike any eyewear location I've been. Normally I feel like I'm in a hospital <laughs> or something. So this is very nice. And I'm sure that that was a strategic decision. Did you design the interior and why choose this style? Uh, so the design actually came down to just uh, me and my partner. Um, my partner and I designed it together and um, he, he has a background in finance but he also is quite creative and so am I and I think that um, we were able to really just put our heads together and create a space um, both with my background on how I'd like the patients to feel and experience the space and his experience on the other side of it. How were you able to fund line of sight which would require much more money down? Mm -hmm. Um, so with the funding for the store, um, this is something that, again, I didn't really quite understand until going into it. And I'm lucky to have, again, my partner who, who has a background in finance and investing to really have a good grasp on it. Um, so uh, he taught me a lot, um, but together we focused on being able to save enough um, money on the side to have, you know, working capital mm -hmm. to plan for something that I don't think anyone could plan for, which is a opening in the middle of a pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, and luckily for me, being able to work, as I mentioned in the past, for years, two jobs to three jobs to four, um, six to seven days a week was really to save up um, to be able to start something um, bigger. And even with Carrot, I was able to take the money um, saved from that uh, with just doing organic marketing and not having to spend quite a lot on um, paid advertisements or budgeting to use that money towards um, funding um, the store. 
Um, and then having small like business loans taken out mm -hmm. um, is something that I uh, we also invested in. You've mentioned marketing a few times mm -hmm. um, as you spoke about starting this business. Uh, tell me about your marketing strategy, both with Carrot Eyewear and Line of Sight. Mm -hmm. They're different slightly, mm -hmm. um, require different types of marketing. Uh, you do have a very large social media following, which can definitely help. Mm -hmm. So how did you market these two brands? Uh, with Carrot, I, um, the neat thing was I um, am also a, I guess, um, content creator or digital creator. Um, um, and I guess influencer, right? Mm -hmm. Back in the day, I think back in the day, that was like more like two years ago, <laughs> three years ago. Back in the day, in the day. before COVID. <laughs> yes. um, you know, like healthcare professionals, I think it they felt really uncomfortable putting themselves out there mm -hmm. um, to to share that they have um, social media because it, it's a conflicting view. Should I put myself out there as a professional? Um, does it feel wrong? And um, for a while, I actually didn't even plan on growing my social media until I think up until maybe two, three years ago, I, I decided, you know, it's really a fear of self-judgment, if anything, because I'm really the, the only person that's holding myself back from putting myself out there. Mm -hmm. And so what if people um, don't like it? And then I was shocked. People really responded to me being able to share my story, um, being authentic and sharing that I am an optometrist, but I also do have a personal life, and that's where um, my social platform came from, Dr. Jen and Juice, and that's um, where it grew. And I think from from learning that, um, being as an influencer on the side and working with companies um, and other brands, yeah. um, I learned uh, the the opposite side. So. When I started Carrot, I actually learned what it's like to be the brand approaching influencers. So I kind wow. of use that to um, that knowledge to be able to sort of turn it around and know what the influencers want and how to work with them and um, to get them to um, may, uh, maybe want to share a product that they personally really authentically enjoy wearing. So mainly for you, it's been social media and it's been word of mouth marketing through online reviews and mm -hmm. things along those lines. I've noticed that you have gotten some press and publicity. Mm -hmm. um, you've been on a few TV shows. Many mm -hmm. people would love to be on TV shows. Mm -hmm. Many people would love to have their business um, featured like that. How do you do it? How? Um, I knock on their doors. Like, Please, <laughs> Please on TV. Me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but like, and, and I'm just grateful. I think they're just opportunities of doors that um, people have opened up for me, and I. Um, I'm just really lucky, and I think that um, I, I just um, am really appreciative of the people who are able to help me along the way. And I think it's really knowing key people that want to be there to help me and put me in touch with um, specific companies or, or um, others. With TV shows, um, they have reached out to me, mm -hmm. some of them, to um, bring me on the show, and they thought, um, no, I've, they just looked me up and they saw my social media. Yeah. or um, my, my website um, and they see the store and they think that it's a cool concept and they're intrigued and they want to um, talk about it. Um, do you have any tips on networking in this type of industry mm -hmm. and, and networking in a way that provides results like that you've seen? When you're good to someone mm -hmm. and you are, I guess, generous and you um, help someone in a way where mm -hmm. there's no like intents behind it. I think that that really carries a lot of weight and I think that it's always really just like making sure that, um, for example, if I have a patient come in, um, I'm really taking good care of them as a friend mm -hmm. um, and treating everyone that way. And they happen to maybe be in a, in a specialty or they know someone that um, knows someone else. They're more than happy to um, put me in touch with someone and I think that really is just the most authentic way. In the past hosted uh, a few events when prior to having my space and these events consisted of working with different um, local brands um, that are in uh, New York. I um, 
would tell them that I'm hosting events, for, let's say, uh, one of them was for like woman um, empowerment. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of um, key leaders within New York City um, come into a space to do wellness and yoga, and then we did a talk. Um, and then there we had products um, from local uh, vendors that are um, founded by women as well oh, to I really that. spread the mass that message. What is one piece of advice you would give to aspiring entrepreneurs? Can I give two? You can give two, you can give three, you know, the more the merrier. Um, my first advice, and I think that applies to really um, everyone, is uh, don't focus on what success looks like. Um, focus on what makes you happy. Mm. And um, for the longest time, and I think it's very easy, especially, especially in this modern digital age, to see what someone else is doing and to think that they're successful and to think that maybe you're not there yet. and to um, feel like you have to do something just because someone else is doing it. And I think that lacks purpose. Um, I think that understanding that someone's life may look very different from yours, and that's completely okay. But you'll get there when you're passionate about something and you're happy with what you do. Success will come to you in a different way. That's um, so true because it's so easy to compare yourself these days. But yeah. it really is about what makes you happy. Yeah. Because even the most successful people what you think is success, they're not happy. I mean, you've seen so many celebrities talk about this, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. just because they're famous, it doesn't mean they're happy. Yeah. Um, uh, and the other one was, uh, oh, I have three. So the other one <laughs> is... <Nice. laughs> We're getting extras with this interview. <laughs> uh, my other one is really to focus on your craft, mastering your craft. Um, just like, um, and I think this is something that I see, and I learned a lot in terms of eyewear, like some of the brands that are made in Japan. Um, in, in the culture, they focus on their specific craft, and they do it over and over and over and over until they reach perfection. Um, and I really think mastering your craft and being good at one or two things is important because that is your specialty. Mm -hmm. And um, being able to carry a product that you know within that one or two um, uh, realms of specialty, you are exceeding in it, and yeah. I think is really important as an entrepreneur. Um, so focusing on what um, your key purpose is or, or your your niche, um, and then really the last one is to um, I follow a one percent rule or one percent plan. Um, have you heard of that before? I think I've, I think I know what you're getting to, but I'd love to hear more. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think um, to me, maybe it means something different, but to me it, it means um, each day to wake up and work on some uh, being 1% better. Each day, as long as you do um, work on it on, on that 1%, it adds up, and it's accumulation of that over time. So it's been absolutely wonderful having you on the show, Jennifer, and thanks for those that joined us and everyone that tuned in today. Now, if you want to learn more about Dr. Jennifer Sai, visit drjenniferside.com, follow her on Instagram at Dr. Jen and Juice, and her studio line of sight vision. That is all for this edition of School of Hustle. Keep up with all of our episodes on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you stream and download podcasts. And if you like what you heard, please leave a review, share with your friends, and subscribe to our show. We'll see you next time. Bye.